Hey guys, how are you? I hope you're all doing very well. This afternoon I'm going to be doing a movie review, so I hope you find this one interesting. This movie is a crime film from the UK, English language, released in the year 2014, directed by Gerard Johnson, and this film is called Hyena. So Hyena is set in the underworld of corruption in the police force. You've got this detective who is doing dirty business with the Turkish Mafia, but there is something that happens that forces this detective to switch his allegiance to the Albanian Mafia. So this Albanian Mafia are getting help by this detective to stay one step ahead of some officers that are investigating them for heavy human trafficking and this is the deal that they have and this is the way that the detective lives. So the detective's life is about to be complicated when he is recruited by another detective played by Stephen Graham who tells him that they're going to assemble this special task force to hit these Albanians front on. So this detective is, is becoming increasingly more difficult to do business with the Albanians but then when this detective gets an insight into what these Albanians are actually doing with some of their own, this guy, this detective starts to have a little bit of compassion and this compassion is making him doubt what he is doing is right and he wants to redeem himself but in order to redeem himself he's going to have to break that loyalty he has with the Albanians and that is going to prove to have horrific and brutal consequences so whether or not this detective can get out of this situation with some sort of redeemable quality and at the same time keep his life is something you're going to have to find out for yourself because that's as far as I'm going my synopsis now my thoughts on Hyena. I was very, very excited to see this film. Now, Gerard Johnson, the director of this movie, I'm a massive fan of ever since I saw the film Tony London Serial Killer. Now, Tony London Serial Killer was an extremely realistic portrayal of a man who was troubled, who was shunned by society, and it was giving an insight into just a deeply disturbing sort of element in that this guy, it wasn't condoning what he was doing, but it was giving a reason as to why this serial killer was who he was, and therefore it gave it a lot of realism, is that you could relate to this guy, and that was the scary thing, is that this guy was doing horrible things, but you thought he was a victim of his circumstances. So there's a strong sense of realism in Tony Lone's serial killer and that's why I thought it was even more scary than it would be if it was just a caricature of a serial killer. So for that reason I really wanted to see what Gerard Johnson could deliver in Hyena, whether or not he was a versatile director. And there's also another reason I wanted to see this film is the fact that Peter Ferdinando was the main character, the detective in this film. Now he was also the main character in Tony Lone's serial killer. So once again it was another partnership between Gerard Johnson and Peter Ferdinando. And so those expectation levels were very high coming into the film and unfortunately those expectation levels were not met because I think this movie is not as complex as Tony London's Serial Killer was. Now Tony London's Serial Killer that had a very complex sort of character in a very simplistic world. Whereas in this film, I think it tried to do a little bit too much than it was capable of, and therefore it doesn't give you as much depth to the characters as you would have in Tony Lund's Serial Killer. And so you can't really invest your time as much in this film as you do with the other film, and I just thought that was a little bit of a disappointment, because this movie is very brutal. It does capture the lifestyle very, very well. There are some memorable scenes, and there are some fairly good performances, but in the end it doesn't hit you as hard as because you felt like something was missing and ultimately that thing was that was missing was the substance this is more a case of style over substance in my opinion it's because the atmosphere was very good it was very neon lighting it felt like an an environment that you didn't want to be part of and it really made you feel uncomfortable and the further you went into it you sensed that the detective was losing all sense of control and was losing all sense of decency and so it's a very difficult film to really uh, you know, take a lot of comfort from because you don't have a hero and you don't have a straight out villain is that you've got people in this world that are as bad as each other and so basically you're trying to side with the person who is the least sort of evil and that's very hard to do is because it's giving you caricature of a good guy a policeman and the caricature of a bad guy being a robber but when you combine those two you don't really have anyone to root for so you feel that this is a situation where you hope that the, de uh, the detective can really get out of it without losing too much but the problem is because you don't really get it too much connection to this main character you don't really care if he comes out of it or not and it's more a case of the atmosphere of the situation and that these horrible things that are happening, it's more a case of waiting for something bad to happen as opposed to hoping nothing bad will happen. So Peter Fernandino's performance was quite decent. He was a lot different to Tony Lennon's serial killer, so he does show versatility, but I just thought there was not much of a connection there. I just didn't really care what happened to him or his family, and that was a problem because the movie does promise connections. You know, at the start of the film, you've got these detectives who are doing bad things, but you sense they all loved each other, and so they had a bond there that I thought was fairly strong, but the bond was never 
developed in a way where you felt like you get more insight into these characters. As the movie goes along, the situation spirals out of control, but these characters stay very still. They don't really move, they don't really evolve into anything bigger, and at the end of it you think to yourself, you don't know any more about these characters than you did at the start of the film. And that's ultimately the problem, is that you know, it's more about the situation as opposed to these character developments of people doing bad things who have been sworn to protect us. And that, to me, is a very scary thought, in that you've got a policeman who is in dealings with you know, bad guys, but you're never really felt that sort of emotion because you felt that this detective wasn't quite you know as powerful as he really should have been and so you've got other performances from Neil Maskell who I thought was very forgettable he was this side character that didn't really provide anything I'm a massive fan of Neil Maskell but I thought his abilities weren't utilised and you've got Stephen Graham who plays another corrupt policeman who is uh, assigned head of this task force that I thought his character really wasn't developed to anything memorable as well so you've got a lot of potential in this film but it's never really delivered because I just thought Gerard Johnson didn't have that clear mindset that he had in Tony London Serial Killer and that there were a lot more characters in this film when they all come together, you feel like it just didn't gel all that well. I will say the Albanians in the film were fantastic. This is an incredibly brutal film. I mean, the, some of the stuff that happens was very shocking to me. And I thought it needed to be as hard-hitting with the violence because it does get you into this world. And that this is a different world to the world we're used to. This is a world that lives by different rules. And that if you, if you basically did these Albanians wrong, you were going to suffer consequences. And I thought that the brutality of this film wasn't done just to shock you, it was done to show you the consequences and give you that intimidation that these Albanians were. And there were some human trafficking scenes that I thought were very, very hard to watch. So it's an extreme film, and it's, as I said, it's grounded in a lot of realism, but the characters just don't complement that realism to a point where you think that you really care about what's going on. And then right at the end, I thought right at the end was a bitter, bitter disappointment. You know, it actually felt like like uh, Gerard Johnson didn't know how to end the movie and he just cut it and he basically said to the audience you make up your own judgment as to what happened now I'm all for ambiguous endings but the problem with this film is that it's so ambiguous that it's so open-ended that no real you know um, no real conclusions feel very satisfying it's because you're not given enough to really indicate what this guy might do it just feels like it finishes there and you think okay well, where's the rest of this film no hang on the credits are coming up it's over and so I, I, th I felt a little bit insulted by the ending I just thought it was very weak in the way it finished and that is coming from a guy who loves ambiguous endings but I just thought this ending was way too ambiguous and it actually felt like the director didn't know how to finish this this film and that was a massive disappointment coming from a guy that I have a lot of respect for but unfortunately Hyena you know, it does have positives, but unfortunately there are a lot more negatives that unfortunately weigh this experience down. So overall for Hyena, only going to give it three stars. I was disappointed. I really wanted to like it a lot more than I did. Alright guys, that's it for my review. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks, thank you for watching movies and I'll see you later.